Welcome to a model steam engine test plant, part 25. This boiler plant does not seem to steam very well. I will make some modifications starting with the gas jet sizes. This is only the starting point and I will see what happens. As you can see the gas jet holder is sat on the bench at the front of the plant because I'm going to change the jet sizes. This is only the first part on what will be quite an interesting voyage of discovery. Personally I have had quite a few problems with gas fired centre flue model boilers. What I'm doing here is changing the number 5 jets and I did notice as I was removing them that one of the jets seemed to be larger than the other although both of them clearly said number 5 on the side. This one looks to have a larger hole in the end and here's the other one where the hole looks to be a number 5. Once I removed the jets I blew out the jet holder using a compressed airline to make sure no particles were within. And here to prove that these are indeed number 5 jets is one of the jets in my hand which clearly displays 5 on the side. This clip shows an extract from a previous video that I made. I was working on an early Cheddar model steam plant and this one had a fire tube boiler. Later on the Cheddar model's boilers were of the water tube type with a small ceramic burner plugged into the side. This is the burner taken from the fire tube model. You may be wondering why I'm suddenly diversifying. What I'm trying to show is the difference between this gas burner and the ones in the twin flue boiler. And here are the burners in the twin flue boiler in a close-up. Look at the size of the primary air holes. And now look at the size of the primary air holes in the early Cheddar Models burner. Quite a good bit larger. But unfortunately using gas burners with a large primary air hole there is a trade-off. The boiler makes a howling noise. This is a castle steam boiler called a Bug that I worked on a while ago. It had number 16 jets and it was unusable. I didn't make any modifications to the burners, I just changed the jets for number 8s. And it worked a lot better and made a lot of steam, but it used to howl, which was a bit of a problem. Here's an extract from the original series, which was called a steam plant using a castle steam boiler. This was the bonus episode. I'm going to change the number 5 jets for some number 8 jets which is slightly bigger. The problem with number 5s is because the hole in the jet is so small it's easily blocked by any debris or rubbish that you often get in commercial gas canisters. Also occasionally internal scale from within the copper piping gets into the jet and blocks it up. So by fitting number 8s which is slightly bigger I'm hoping this is going to rectify the problem. In the video extract you've just seen I even tried number 10s but number 8 seemed to be fine. Once upon a time I used to use Max Steam boilers but unfortunately Mike Abbott who ran Max Steam retired and I miss our chats I used to speak to him frequently discussing various problems to do with boilers and particularly burners. Back to the job at hand and here is the gas tank in position it's sat in a bowl of water to help prevent it chilling and the ceramic burners are fitted with a pair of number 8s. You have to keep a sense of scale, the solution is not just to increase the size of the burner jets. I recently bought some number 12s from Clevedon Steam, I'm looking forward to trying these out. But definitely not on these ceramic burners, the primary air holes are far too small. There's a nice healthy explosion when I ignite the gas. I experimented with the position of the gas jets in the Venturis. And it would appear on this particular boiler that all the way in is the correct setting. Time now to have a cup of tea while the boiler raises steam. And I do apologise for my cup of tea looking rather weak, but it isn't, it's the video lighting which is very bright. The first thing I notice is that the hissing noise from the gas jets is a good bit louder. But the heat doesn't appear to be any better than with the number 5s. I'll leave it for a while and see how it goes on. In the meantime, I'm emptying the water from the displacement lubricator and refilling it with steam oil. Despite mentioning very frequently which types of oil to use, when the videos go public on YouTube, I start to get asked the same questions over and over again. The main question being, what sort of oil should I use in my displacement lubricator? And the answer to that, once and for all, is steam oil. Not engine oil, not machine oil, not lubricating oil, but steam oil. For this steam test I didn't have to drain quite as much water out of the boiler before I could get any steam. 
and now the pressure is starting to rise. But there is a problem. There is a fire at the top of the chimney. A proper fire, you know, flames. You can't really see them, they're almost invisible. But they are flames nevertheless. The gas is burning outside of the boiler, which is a sure sign that the primary air is insufficient. I'm using a piece of masking tape held over the chimney. When I turned the gas down, it stopped burning. I went into the house to select a suitable engine to test. And when I came back, surprisingly, the safety valve was blowing off. This is a pop safety valve, but it doesn't really pop. It makes this strange sound. The sound you get when you eat too many Brussels sprouts. For this test, I'm going to use the Stuart triple expansion engine I rebuilt a while ago. I connected a piece of silicone rubber tubing to it. But as soon as I opened the steam valve, not unsurprisingly at 60 pounds per square inch of steam, the pipe blew off. This problem was easily rectified by using a cable tie. I didn't open the drain cocks because they're at the other side, just where the steam engine test plant is, so that wouldn't have been a good idea. Instead I just kept rotating the flywheel until water and oil came out of the low pressure cylinder's exhaust output. Once I cleared the condensate, the engine ran fine. Note to self, do not point the camera straight at the exhaust outlet, otherwise this happens. The problem is that this boiler does not produce enough steam and the pressure soon drops to 25 pounds per square inch. In the next episode I'm going to start the modification procedure to make this boiler steam properly. And what will probably happen is it will start to howl, which is probably why the air holes on the Venturi have been kept at a reduced size. My Cabot used to produce a boiler almost exactly like this one and he used sliding collars over the primary air inlet holes so you could tune out the howl. Quite a good solution, but I never found it that effective. I'll show some potential solutions to the howling problem in future episodes of this series. It's all down to controlling the resonant frequency. I turned the gas off as you've just seen and removed the canister. Now I'm blowing first of all WD-40 through the engine, followed by steam oil. And this is how I do it. Using WD-40, then steam oil, the air pressure blows away all the water, which is essential when the cylinder block, etc. is made from cast iron. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.